Hi everyone, Rainy Bastarash here, and today we're going to learn what goes into creating an effective hypnosis induction. So for those of you that are following along, go ahead and get your notepads, have a seat, relax, and let's get started. This is video two of our seven part hypnosis session writing program. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so just as a refresher, in these videos, I'm going to show you how to write each part of a five part hypnosis session to make it as powerful and as effective as possible. Now, those of you that are following along are encouraged to create your own scripts each week as we go along and submit them to us for publishing on the last week. Now remember, you can participate anytime between now and the last video seven. Just look at all the previous videos and get caught up so you'll be able to submit your completed work on the last week. So let's get started with lesson two, which is what is an induction? Inductions are the different ways that we use to relax the subjects in a session and help them to become more open to suggestion. That's pretty much it. There's many different ways that you can do that, many different ways to relax them. And I guess you could say it's only limited to your imagination. Now, some inductions work better for non-analytical clients, some work better for analytical, but we're not gonna get into that or cover that in this video. And if you want to learn more about the difference between analytical and non-analytical sessions, go ahead and click on the link above and you can download our hypnosis manual for free and learn a little bit more about that. In creating an induction, it's usually best to start out by having your subject take three deep breaths. Now, one common way to create an induction is just to have them relax each part of their body in Usually it's done in a descending mo motion from head to toe, or you can go from toe up, it doesn't really matter. But have them relax each part of their body, and that's what's called a body scan. Now as you mention each part of the body in this scanning process, it's important to pause and allow them to imagine it themselves and give them a chance to feel it relaxing. The idea is by you mentioning the body part, they're able to imagine it, so it's bringing it to mind so they can pinpoint it and relax it right on the spot. So here's an example. I'd like you to relax all the muscles on the top of your head. Go ahead and relax all the muscles in your top of your head. You can relax your forehead and feel that relaxation going down into your eyes, your cheeks, and your nose. And as you allow that to relax, feel the relaxing, <clears throat> excuse me, feel the relaxation going down even further to your mouth, your cheeks and your jaw. Relax your neck and even your shoulders relax completely. And now your arms relax going down to your elbows, and you keep on going down with each part all the way down to their toes. Now, even as I was reciting that to you quickly and doing it right here on the spot, you were probably able to find that you could relax yourself right now, not even in a session. So you can see how well that actually works. Now, some inductions, people like to have people tighten their muscles first and loosen them afterwards as they go. This creates kind of an opposite sensation for those that might have a little bit more difficulty and letting go by just relaxing as I did in the previous method. So it's kind of like tighten up the muscles in your hand and just let go and feel it relax. Because by tightening it, they can feel the tenseness and when they let go, it's so much easier to feel the relaxation. It's kind of like when you tell somebody, oh, you feel pain free. If you gave them a little pain first, okay, don't do that. But if you pinched them with a needle and then when it went away, see how pain free you feel? They had a contrast, something to compare it with. So here's an example. I'd like you to tighten up all the muscles. And you can do it with me right now. Tighten up all the muscles in your face right now. Okay, your forehead, your eyes. Just tighten up, you know, you could close your eyes and tighten it really tight. 
Okay, almost like you're making a funny face. As tight as you can, hold it, and let go and just relax your face. Now tighten up your neck, the front part of your neck and the back part of your neck. Make it really tight so you can get those muscles popping out, <laughs> okay? And allow them to relax. And your shoulders, tighten up your shoulders as tight as you can. Tight, 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 tight. And let go. And you can feel that relaxation going down into your arms and your elbows, your forearms, even your fists as you tighten them up as tight as you can. Tight, 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 and let go. You see how when you let go, it feels even more relaxed than what you probably did in the previous method? So that's another method you could do. Now, I showed you how to do a body scan. I showed you how to tense up the muscles and let go. Another thing you can do, let's say you want to do a regular body scan, is you can add a storyline to it. So this way you can make this scenario or make it a scenario of relaxing their body that's more imaginable. And of course you understand that the more you can use your imagination, the stronger hypnosis will be. So it basically takes their mind off the direct task of just relaxing okay so if you're not focusing on just relaxing because you're listening to a storyline it helps you to release any resistance that you know the subject might have to your words to your telling them to relax so an example would be uh, using the pebble method okay I want you to close your eyes you can do it with me right now close your eyes and imagine that there's a calm pond in front of you. Imagine this really calm pond where the water seems to be like glass. It's so smooth, no wind at all. And imagine tossing a pebble in the middle of that pond. And of course, as you toss that pebble, it creates ripples. So I want to imagine, I want you to imagine that you are this pond. And when you toss the pebble, it's a, you're tossing the pebble as if it's your eyes and you're relaxing your eyes and you can feel the ripples of relaxation expanding in your face from your eyes going out further. So imagine you as this calm pond and the ripples are going out further and further helping you to relax your entire face, your mouth, your ears, your chin, your entire head is relaxed. And you can feel those ripples going down further into your neck and rippling out further. And of course, the idea is rippling out further into your chest, into your stomach, your arms, your fingers, your torso, all the way down to your toes. So you can see it gives them something to imagine, those ripples going outwards further and further and further. So now another uh, idea you can use other than the pebbles is maybe something, a theme with leaves. As you're relaxed, I want you to imagine that there's leaves falling down from a tree, but going down extremely slow motion. And as those leaves extend down, you can feel them as they just kind of, your eyes are closed, but you can feel them as they're fluttering past your head. And it's so relaxing, and you're finding that as the leaves are touching your head, you're relaxing, and they're going down past your neck and your shoulders, and feel them just floating in the air as you're relaxing your, oh, your chest and your stomach, I lost my place there, <laughs> all the way down to your toes. So again, anything that can flow downward like that, you can put it with the body scan to get them to think of something else. That's a great way to get them to not have resistance on just relaxing their shoulders because you told them to. Another thing you could do is help them to relax by making their eyes feel tired because eyes seem to be one of the easiest place or best place on the top of the head to start the relaxation from because that's where you know when you're thinking you're looking out through your eyes you're closing so it seems to be such a, a focal point or a good place to start so once you've had them relax and gave them you know had them take their three deep breaths you tell them in just a moment I'm going to have you open your eyes and focus on a spot on the wall in front of you now it's good that you would have a spot on the wall first. If you don't want to write on your wall, what I used to do is take uh, a small piece of paper, kind of like this here. I'd make a dot on it, so just to show you. Okay, spot on the wall, what I do is I take a, well, actually a blank piece of paper, let's go this way, a blank piece of paper, and I would just make a spot like that, 
And again, if this is the wall, I would just tape it on the wall behind them, uh, in front of them, excuse me. So when they open their eyes, of course, there would be a spot. Now, where would you put the spot? You would put it slightly, I want to put this so you can see, slightly above eye level. So when I'm looking at it, I'm looking straight. You want it to look straight, but to have that eye strain going on so they're looking upwards. So see, I'm looking straight here, but my eyes are going upwards. So you keep the head this way, looking upwards. And that gives them an eye strain. So you explain it to them like that. In just a moment, I'm going to have you open your eyes. And when you do, I want you to focus on this spot on the wall in front of you. I want you to keep your head straight, looking below the spot, but focusing on it with your eyes as your eyes are pointing upwards. When you open your eyes, you can even kind of show them if you want. But they'll understand that. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to be counting from 20 down to 1 backwards. And with each number I say, as I say it, I want you to close your eyes. And then you can open them. Then I'm going to say the next number. You're going to close your eyes and then you can open them. So go ahead and open your eyes right now and look at that spot. And just so they understand, so with each number I say, if I say 20, you're going to close your eyes. Then let them open. Close your eyes and let them open. So go ahead and keep your head straight and stop focusing on that spot. And as I say each number, as I count backwards, and you close your eyes, you're going to let your eyes open backwards, open back up if you want to. Because each time you close them, with each number I say, you'll become more and more relaxed. And you'll allow them to open as long as you want to until it gets too inconvenient or tired. And then you can just leave them closed. So let's go ahead and begin. 20. Close your eyes. And let them open if you like. 19. 18. 17. You want to go slow when you do this. The whole idea is to get their eyes tired. 16. More and more tired. 15. Pretty soon, somewhere between 12, 11, you won't want to open them anymore. 14. They'll become so tired, you'll just want to keep them closed. 12. And you keep on going down like that. Now, most people... If I tell them somewhere around 12 or 10, your eyes are going to stay closed. You won't want to open them no more. Usually that happens. Some of them will go all the way down to 8. And yes, you'll find this out in the book. Your more analytical clients will go all the way down to 1. Don't worry about that. You'll, you'll say, and 1. And they'll close their eyes and keep your eyes closed and continue to relax. And they'll just do that. So it doesn't matter if they're analytical, they don't relax that much anyways. They don't even like to relax. So with this exercise, don't worry about it. If they close their eyes before, then great. If they don't, just count all the way down to one, and you would stop, tell them to keep their eyes closed, and then move on to your next section, which we'll be talking about in the following video. So that's the eye strain method. Uh, works very well. And again, it's kind of like the, the muscle one where you tighten and close them. Okay, they're doing something. They're doing something to focus or take away from the resistance of just relaxing. Now, at the end of that, once they close their eyes all the way, in some cases, if they close their eyes, you know, at number five or so, I would just move on. I probably wouldn't even do uh, a body scan. But if you want, when you get all the way down to one, if they get all the way down around there, and so you don't think they're that relaxed yet, then, okay, I'd like you to relax every part of your body, starting with your head, and you can go put a body scan there as well. So you can see you can combine these if you feel you need them. Now, when it comes to inductions, like I said, there's so many different variations. You can combine them. You can make them long. You can make them short. And some people will even take a simple body scan going from head to toe, and afterwards, they'll do a downward count kind of like a deepener, which we'll cover, cover in two more videos, uh, which is counting backwards from, let's say, 20 down to 1 or 10 down to 1 to relax them more. I mean, you can do something like that, but keep in mind, uh, I like to say warning, okay, deeper is not better. You don't have to take them so deep that they're in a zombie state. Sometimes you can actually take somebody too deep to do the basic hypnosis things. Keep in mind that when you're doing something really long, like uh, 
you know, a, a simple body scan and adding some kind of additional relaxation. If the person isn't extremely non-analytical, if they're not the kind of person that really likes to relax, they may become frustrated. They may become bored. They might even open your eyes to see what's going on. Okay, and that's that's fine. You just tell them to close their eyes back. But it, that it sometimes makes you feel a little weird when they open their eyes. You know, uh, it's not going to defeat the purpose because you know they are where they are. But you don't have to do this really long thing. So keep in mind when you create an induction. The point is not to get them so relaxed that they fall asleep or become zombies, okay? You simply need to get them to enter the alpha brainwave state, or depending on what you're doing, maybe the theta. You don't need to get them very deep to be able to, you know, go ahead and start conducting your session. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about depth testing, so you'll be able to know exactly where the client is and how deep they are for what you want to do. But in most cases, you don't need to bring them very deep. Think of this for a moment. Simply by closing your eyes, just do it right now, just by closing your eyes, you're closing out 80% of beta activity. Beta is the state you're in right now listening to me using all five of your senses, you know, sight, sound, smell, da 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 da, -da. Okay, so all five of your senses, that's the beta, the busy, working, waking state. But when you close your eyes, you're blocking out 80%. That means you're 80% in the alpha brainwave state, which is the next brainwave state, which is the hypnotic state. Now, if you take three deep breaths, it brings you even more. So that's not really very deep. How long, how much of an induction do you need to conduct just to get somebody to feel relaxed enough to feel like... Yeah, with their eyes closed, okay, which is the 80% in the alpha. Doesn't take very much, okay? Uh, but you might want to take them a little deeper depending on what you want to do with them. What I mean by that, the alpha brainwave state is where you would do the majority of your sessions, such as smoking, weight loss, stress reduction, test taking, and so on. The everyday things that most people would come see you for. But... Theta is a little deeper. Theta brainwave state is the, I guess you could say the daydreaming state, the state you are just before you fall asleep when you go to bed. Okay, I think of it, that's not deep. All I got to do is sit myself, sit in a recliner for about five minutes, and I'm in the theta brainwave state because I just about fall asleep. Now, theta is where you would take somebody for more controlled issues such as pain management, such as dealing with traumatic memories or events, uh, we would take them for painless childbirth, for instance, if they were going to you know, be in an emergency room and a doctor wanted you to help them with you know, anesthesia. So th that's the level for a theta. So for most of them, they just need to be in a light, relaxed state. So now it's my turn to create an induction for you. Remember I said with each part of the session as we go along, I'm going to create part of the same part of the session. So I have my part, okay, and I want you to create yours. So... I'm going to be using um, fog as something. So I'm going to make it so there's a little, uh, I guess you could say, storyline with it. So I'm going to use uh, a nice relaxing fog, a misty one, a light one. And what I thought I'd do, rather than go ahead and pre-planning it and writing it out, I don't have anything written, I'm going to make it up right in front of you as a way of showing you how it is simple to do these things. It's not something, it's not brain surgery, it's not something you've got to spend a lot of time. As long as you can do something that's relaxing, then you're fine. So I want you to imagine right now, and you can do it with me if you like by, you know, closing your eyes and, you know, let me know in the comments below if you liked it afterwards, okay? So here we go. Go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath. And take a second deep breath afterwards. And on your third deep breath, hold it for about three seconds. And exhale and relax. I want you to use your imagination now and imagine everything that I say to you as if it's really happening. I'd like you to imagine that there you are sitting in a nice comfortable room. And I want you to imagine that just above you, you notice that there's a fog forming. Now it's not a really thick fog, it's actually a light kind of a mist fog. You can still see fairly well through it. 
But the thing is, as it's coming down and descending, you can feel it radiating warmth. It's a warm, healing, happy fog. It, you know it's going to feel really good as soon as it touches your body. And it's going down further and further. And now, as it's moving slowly, it's touching the top of your head. It feels so good to touch the top of your head. And you can allow that part of your head to relax. It automatically relaxes your head as it goes down. It's relaxing your forehead. And you feel it covering your eyebrows, your eyelids. Feels so good as it touches your cheeks and your nose. And it's descending down further. Relaxing your mouth and your lips. Your chin. Your whole face now is so relaxed. Feels wonderful. Such a healing, happy sensation. And the fog descends down further, covering your neck. And you feel the front and back of your neck relaxing completely. And it touches your shoulders. You can allow your shoulders to just let go as you're safe in this comfortable, warm fog. As it descends down further, you could feel it covering your chest and your arms. You're slowly going down further to your elbows, your forearms. In fact, all of your arms with your wrists, your hands, even your fingers. Relaxing completely. And your stomach relaxes. And that wonderful fog is going down, covering your hips as they just let go. Your thighs. And relax your knees. As you feel that warm healing fog going down to your calves, your ankles, covering your feet, and even relaxing your toes feeling so very wonderful and comfortable. Okay, you can go ahead and open your eyes. And how did that feel for you? I'd like to know. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Again, I don't know because I don't have anybody I can see. All I'm seeing is myself and the camera, okay? So I don't see how it worked on you. So please let me know so I, I know whether this is a success and I can publish it or if I need to do some work on it. But that's how you would do an induction. So take your time. Now I guess it's your time to create yours. Think of how you want to do it. Are you going to do a straight body scan? Would you like to include some kind of a theme and be creative? Depending on what you're going to hypnotize someone for. If they say they like the ocean, maybe you can make a theme around the ocean. Maybe they're into Avatar, that movie, and you might want to make something Avatar-ish. Is that a word? Avatarish? Well, it sounds good. So whatever it is, think of what you want to do and go ahead and create it. Now, once you've finished, once you're done, what I want you to do is read it to one of your family members, like I just did with mine to you. Read it to you, one, one of your family members. Have them close their eyes and tell them, I just want to see if you think this is relaxing. And... See if they find it relaxing, because your family members can be your best critic. Strangers might not tell you the truth. A family member will be brutally honest, okay? So you might want to rework it, because this is something that you're going to want to use with clients later, or other people will use it from the manual. So that's it for today. So go ahead and create yours. Now, we want to make this manual that we're going to be doing with all your scripts as successful as possible. So please share this video with as many other hypnosis enthusiasts that you can so they can benefit from it as well as you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in video three where we'll be speaking about depth testing. Bye-bye.